Whoop, there you go. So interestingly, although proportionally it's much higher, the total amount that it climbed is about the same, which might make sense if we investigate what is causing it to rise up in the first place. When you start talking about this, often it'll get thrown around the idea that what's happening is you are having a chemical reaction the oxygen inside the container is getting burned up, the oxygen disappears and that creates low pressure. If you Google that, you're gonna start finding pages that say that that's not correct. That you're gonna be getting all of the oxygen inside the container replaced by carbon dioxide and that it's gonna be about the same volume, so it shouldn't explain that change. This other website talks about how the chemical reaction happening is not just oxygen, but it's oxygen combining with the paraffin in the candle wax. And what you end up with as a result of the chemical reaction is not just carbon dioxide for oxygen, but you're also getting water produced in the mix. And you have to take into account everything that's being produced by the oxygen combining with the paraffin. What they said the math works out to is for every two oxygen molecules that disappear, you get one molecule of carbon dioxide. You also get atoms of water, which coalesce together, bringing down the density even further. So we have multiple things that can be happening. When the air inside that chamber starts heating up, it will expand. And when I'm just putting the lid down over it, that expanding hotter air can actually escape. Bubbles might blip out of the bottom a little bit. And then when it cools down, all of that cooled air creates a lower pressure. But it is also the oxygen getting used up, turning into both water and carbon dioxide, but in smaller volumes and densities than the original air inside the container. I like the, the girl there sitting there, standing there like that, looking as if she's interested. But she's probably not interested at all because this is probably the f f tenth take of doing the whole video. Yeah, but, but, but when you actually look at what they're actually doing, it's, it's, it's rubbish. It's, it's, it's rubbish what these it's people are actually doing. Rubbish. I mean, come on. They, they, you know, what, they might as well explain away um, a, a button. Well, it's, well it's why is the button round? Oh, well, yeah. they've got to, why has oh, it got well. four holes in it? Yeah, why, well, yeah. Why is it? Why is it this colour, this button, yeah, no, no. this thickness as well? You know, this is what they could be doing. I wonder what hole it would actually fit. What through. jacket would it fit on? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. what clothing item of clothing would it fit this button? I might as well. <laughs> I might as well just do a video. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, Can it's, you guess? It's, the, it is. When you when you it's, actually, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Really. When you actually look at the the, the, people, the the BS, what they're actually talking about and promoting in this video uh, and the re and uh, their explanations for why it's happening one can only conclude that it is just absolute rubbish it's absolute rubbish yeah of honestly course. Cause, because you and i would go with the latter part and that is it's only the expansion expansion of the and air. then when the flame goes out it's the contraction yes. and then the water rises up to fill the the air that's been released out of that out inverted of gl glass yeah. jar. And I'm sure later on in the video we'll, we'll, we'll have a look, a little bit more of a closer look at this video to show, because we've already done some our demonstrations. Yeah, no, yeah, but, but, but these, these people are using this term called oxygen in the air. Absolutely, they're using this phrase, this word oxygen, and there's no proof that oxygen is it's a constituent just, of air. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've yet to see any. Yeah, no, yeah. Air can support combustion. Mm. Air can support life uh, without oxygen. Air without oxygen. Let's let's get rid of the oxygen. oxygen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order for you to make oxygen, you need air mm. to make oxygen. Because you because it's not in the air. Yeah. Because you have you, to make it. Yeah. You have to compress it and you have to concentrate it. Absolutely, of course. And Hence. you can do that in a couple of ways. You can do it just through. Heating a substance. Heating a substance so it up. Calogenates. So it calogenates, absolutely. And it absorbs the surrounding heating, air. Heating, absolutely. Heating a substance in air. In air. Yeah. Or you could use um, <clears throat> an oxygen concentrate, carb, um, pressure swing absorption. absorption yeah. And you can use that technique in order to produce oxygen yeah. from air. Yeah. But you're making it from air. There is no oxygen in air. Yeah. So you have to manufacture yeah. oxygen. So oxygen is concentrated in dry air. Absolutely, of course. Absolutely. So there's no, in this demonstration, I didn't see him actually concentrate the air to produce oxygen. No other, did yeah? you? And especially when he just lit the candle yeah, yeah, in no, the room. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do 
and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because... Oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions, especially if you're Brit and you want to leave the country and live yeah. in Canada. Absolutely, of course. Or, or even if someone's parked their car in your parking space. Oof. Absolutely. Absolutely, of course, yeah. People really don't want to hear that, do they? Well, where else am I supposed to park my car? But that's not my problem. That's your problem. But, but somebody else is using my parking space. But that's not my problem. That's your problem. But I bought myself a big car. There's no parking on the road. I cannot do that. But why are you putting your problem onto me to make it my problem? But, but somebody else is using my parking space. I've got nowhere else to park it. And you can understand why the way people are, why people become misanthropists. Absolutely, because no. of the way people are educated and the way people are nurtured, nurtured in the society they live in, because the society doesn't make them into considerate, considerate, sensible, sensible, responsible, responsible citizens, adults, adults. Yeah. Society doesn't do this. Society doesn't really care about how its people's behave turn out. turn out yeah they're not bothered as long as they pay the money yeah okay as long as they pay the money and don't basically cause a lot of unrest nuisance yeah, well, unrest nuisance, yes. civil unrest yeah they're not bothered they're not they bothered. couldn't care one little it, bit because just think you know if loads of people committed crime it would create lots of jobs so absolutely of course Absolutely. Lawyers, judges and they'll be they'll courts. be all packed all the, all of the courses at university will be packed with students. Oh, right, doing Because crime. they know that the money would be there. Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. the criminal psychologists, the because, lawyers, solicitors. Because I'm the, going, I'm going yeah. to study law. Because the society we live in is all founded and based upon the human condition. Upon human behaviour. Uh, yeah, but the society isn't making that human behaviour any better. better. Absolutely, it doesn't do that. Doesn't all it do does, that. absolutely, all it does is build upon that behaviour. Anyway. And hide, conceal, sweep under the carpet the human behaviour that it dislikes. Oh, right, well, yeah, yeah. That it doesn't regard as the norm. Yeah, in other words... The, the, Which the, is wrong. Yeah, basically. Anyway, come on, let's get on. But anyway, yeah, we're, so we're back again. Let's have a little... What, what, what have we got for everyone's displeasure then, Peter? Well, for everybody's displeasure, we're going to revisit Tim because we've... Um, Tim? Who's Tin? Tim? Oh, Tin. 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 Tin metal. Tin metal. Yeah, because we made we made a little boo boo, haven't we? Oh, I oh, did right, yeah, because well. I stated in a previous video that tin was a true metal, and yet I've come to the conclusion. I've changed my mind now, and I'm thinking, what on earth made me think that? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to look oh. at tin. We're going to have a look at. We're going to have a look at Hertz. Heinrich Hertz. 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 Yeah, I know. Yeah. Heinrich. Heinrich. It hurts that bad. I know. Absolutely, of course. We're going to have a look at that because we we, we, we we were starting to delve into our electricity a little bit more. A little bit more, yeah. And we're dipping we, our we, toes. We found a, a kind of connection between these radio waves and microwaves. These, absolutely, of course. It's, well. it's just, uh, yeah, So we're going to do that. We're going to have a look at bread because if you thought humans do not corrupt nature, you'd be, you'd be wrong. Absolutely, of wrong. course. Uh -huh. Yeah. And we're going to have a little re go on that King of Random video. Go on that King of Random video. Because we've got to show people what's really going on, in our opinion. Mm. And I think that's about it, unless we've got something else. Oh, and we've got uh, uh, an image from uh, well, Jane Freeze. Uh, well, Jane. With uh, an image from a book. From a book about fish and lungs. And breathing. Breathing. Absolutely. Because some people think, only think, that fish breathe oxygen. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Like we do. Well, there's some people who think... <sighs> Even though the fish do not have lungs. But, yeah, but there's... Many people, of them don't have lungs. But there's people who think there's oxygen in water. 
because yeah. some people think that oxygen dissolves in water. water. And we've got to mention straight away that oxygen cannot dissolve in water. water. We've had a glass jar of oxygen that's displaced water, okay, and that water level hasn't changed, altered in nearly six, six months. Well, since August. Since August. Last year. Absolutely. It hasn't budged one okay. bit. So come now, on. the, uh, but I've got to mention, the only time oxygen can exist in water or is when it's attached to another substance. Like sulfuric acid. Like sulfuric acid. H2SO4, for oh, oh, example. For oxygen. Uh, or you can have nitric acid. Mm. Yeah. NO4. Is it NO4? Well, oh, it's, it's NO whatever. Well, let's say it's let's say it's NO4, NO4, or hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Mm. Get yeah. it? Get the gist? Yeah. But without that hydrogen, for example, you won't get oxygen in water. Or the ethyl, the ethyl, or the ethyl part, which provides the hydrogen. That's the binding substance for the oxygen. You cannot put oxygen in water because it doesn't mix. Absolutely. If you think I'm wrong, just go and try it yourself. Oh. Pure, pure, neat oxygen, put it in water. Get yeah. it to yeah. p p be uh, dissolve it. Dissolve in it in water. water. Okay, off you go. Well, Bye. Bye. See you later. Let us know when you've done it. Yeah. Leave a comment below. Leave a comment below when you've done it. Absolutely, of course. But uh, anyway, so let's <clears> do... Um, what should we do first then? Let's do Jane's uh, little yeah, bit here. Now, Jane sent us a little bit about fish and breathing and stuff. And it's all about lungs, this little bit. Okay. Uh, lungs, oxygen and all this kind of... Because society, a lot of people have got... Uh, they, they're kind of like oxygen fixated, aren't they? Yeah, no, yeah. They've got a fixation on oxygen. Sure. They well, think oxygen... Is, is, a in the air. is in the air, is a yeah. constituent of air, which is, in our opinion, totally wrong. wrong. It's yeah. a total... Misguided. Absolutely, of course. But um, it says, it reads here, this, this little page, lungs are thought to have evolved as adaptations to hypoxic or anoxic conditions in the early hydrosphere. They're only really? thought to have evolved, oh, right, yeah. okay? They're yeah. only thought. So it's a, it's a fantasy. Uh, it, absolutely, a thought. How is it? The physicochemical differences between water and air have so differently shaped the morphologies of water breathing gills. They're saying fish breathe water, okay. Oh, then. water breathing. Water oh, breathing well. gills. And air breathing lungs, oh, and, organs. And we breathe in air. We breathe in air. That seems pretty reasonable, doesn't it? Yeah. That usually those structures efficient in one fluid medium fail dismal, dismally in the other. Never, yeah. Absolutely. The phrase, like a fish out of water, used to describe the perils an individual faces outside of its familiar habitat, depicts how a fish soon succumbs to asphyxia or lack of oxygen when removed from water. Well, But it's not, as you, you mentioned yeah, yeah, earlier, yeah. it's more of a lack of water. So, yeah. It should be hyd hydroxia. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hydroxia, hydroxia, not asphyxia. asphyxia. Hydroxia. Yeah. The high viscosity, low concentration, slow diffusivity, dis diffusivity of oxygen in water. Okay, right. Okay. I like how they say the slow diffusion of oxygen in water. That, that's absolutely slow. rubbish. Abs all of that, that whole sentence is rubbish. Curtail effective breathing of liquids using lungs. Mm. Okay. Okay. During laminar. Oh, but what they could mean that by that is that curtail effective breathing of liquids using lungs. What they could be implying there is that when we when we breathe gaseous water, mm. when humans breathe gaseous water, because there's no oxygen in the air, mm. we've got to breathe water. The water of vapor. some uh, water of some vapor. state. Water yeah. vapor. Water gas. Mm. Okay. Um, for, for, so that's what they could be saying there. During laminar flow, a liquid breather has to expand, expend 60 times the energy required for breathing air. The maximum expiratory flow of a liquid is 40 to 100 times lower than air ventilation. When breathing liquid substances, mice, rats, dogs and cats die from exhaustion of the respiratory muscles and subsequent accumulation of carbon dioxide to toxic levels. So whether they're actually giving them neat water, yeah, it depends are on they the drowning? Situation. Well, it depends on the situation. Are they drowning these mice, rats, dogs, and cats? 
no, or no, what? No. Or, you know, you, you don't know because they haven't got a diagram and there's no video to actually well, show never, what they're doing. Well, I've never known of a mice or rat or dog and cats to breathe liquids. No, no, I've never. No, I don't yeah, no. see a dog yeah. holding, yeah. A, holding a bag, got, got a bowl over its head, Oh, filled with water in a swimming pool. In, in, uh, yeah, in I don't bottom. see a dog. I don't see a dog. Absolutely, they yeah. always breathe in air, gaseous water. water. Yeah. Air, gaseous water. Yeah. But uh, when you think about it, even that's another silly, it's silly, just, silly it's power. Absolute, yeah, it's uh, absolute rubbish. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Uh, absolute rubbish. Yeah, of course. Anyway, come on. If only people had a brain. Oh. Yeah. You know, I think so many people need to go and see the Wizard of Oz. Well, it's like, to go and get it's themselves like, some brains. But don't trust the man behind the curtain, as Johnny Draco would say. Absolutely, of course. What, the Iron Curtain? Oh, well, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Was there ever an Iron Curtain? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. it's just ridiculous, isn't it? All of these um, what, the, all of these concepts that you grow up with. East versus West. And, east versus yeah. West. All of, but yeah, all of these phrases that you grow up with when, yeah, you, know, when yeah. you're young. You, you, when you get older, you look back and you think they're all rubbish. Yeah, I know, yeah. All, all of them. They never had any impact on, impact your, life on your life at all. At all. So they're all meaningless. It's been like if someone said, it's been like if you read an article in the paper about World War Three, nuclear war. And yet a lot of flat earthers have researched information. And well, and non flat earthers as well. And non flat earthers. And there's a lot of people who think nuclear, nuclear weapons are just uh, rubbish. A hoax. <coughs> a hoax, big hoax. hoax. Because there's no such thing as a nuclear weapon. weapon. Yeah. Absolutely, we'd be seeing the mini nukes going off yeah, by terrorists, yeah. surely. Yeah. But we don't see that, of course. Reminds me of a of a, a Hammer horror film years ago. A Hammer horror film. Yeah, when they when they had the little <coughs> vial of of, oh. a, of a disease that they could spread. The Dracula had a crystal. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, that wasn't like the Satanic rites of Dracula. Oh, yeah, that's what. Nineteen seventy two. Vial of a, of a disease, bubonic plague. Bubonic or plague, yeah. And he was going to break it so that it would sweep across all humanity and kill kill off loads, loads of people. Absolutely, of course. But it's just fantasy. It's just fantasy because even when you think, even when you understand, if, even when you listen to people explain um, how a nuclear weapon works and it starts like a chain reaction, mm. all that's rubbish. Mm. When you think, about, if you yeah, were, yeah, if yeah. you were to stop and think about it, you think that's just rubbish because mm. it's only a chain reaction within. The pressured environment. Yeah, but in. yeah, but you still need more of the f- of a fuel to support the chain reaction. It will run out of steam. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah. give you the impression that it will just multiply, exacerbate, exacerbate. But yeah. it doesn't. It can't it do that. Worse, yeah. It can't do that. Common sense tells you there's an awful lot of rubbish in society. Sure. People just f- spew out lots of rubbish every day. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. That's all they do. They are just rubbish regurgitators. Regurgitators, absolutely, yeah. of course. But um, anyway, so that's oh, that God. one over with. Let's do. Should we do Hertz's demo? Yeah, let's go and have a look at Hertz. Oh, oh, that hurts. Heinrich. Heinrich. Yeah. Heinrich maneuver. Was it? Oh, right. Isn't that oh. the Heinrich? <laughs> Well, anyway, that, of course, yeah. So well. we've got now. Uh, where are we now? Oh, um, well, we ended up having a look at Heinrich Hertz. Heinrich Hertz, because we actually wanted to know. <clears throat> Isn't didn't he uh, didn't he go to didn't he move to uh, Bosnia? Why Bosnia Herzegovina? Oh right, yeah. Well, he could have. Yeah, founding father. Founding father, father absolutely. Yeah. Of course, he was he was the uh, pilgrim. Founding Pilgrim. <clears throat> anyway, we, we, we had a look at Heinrich Hertz because he was the first person who identified radio waves. Who identified radio waves. <clears throat> Absolutely. He was he was a German I physicist. Believe, or ele- electromagnetic waves. Yeah, Heinrich Rudolf Hertz um, was a German physicist who first conclusively, conclusively, yeah, okay, conclusively proved, proved... The existence of the electromagnetic waves predicted by James Clerk Maxwell and his equations of electromagnetism. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. You, how, you, it f- how it all fits, just fits, falls into place. Fits, fits together. I know, like a hand in a glove. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like a foot in a shoe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm trying to think of some more. Like a camel in the desert. Like a Tory in the government. Absolutely, of course. Oh. Like a dog in a park. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, of course. 
that the unit of frequency cycle per second was named the Hertz in his honour. Mm. He had quite a sad life, really. He did, absolutely, of course, yeah. Well, he was reading through his life, and apparently he had uh, he got married. Got married, got married Elizabeth Doll. He had two daughters as well. There are two daughters, Joanna and there. Mathilde. But it stopped there. He went on to become a notable biologist, Mathilde. During the time, conducted, absolutely, of course. But but it ended there. Absolutely, it and ended he died there. at the age of 36. He died of, he died of granuloma, granulomatosis with polyangiitis at the age of 36. Yes, yeah. Absolutely, of course. And well, that was probably because of all the exposure to his, to his electromagnetic waves. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Absolutely, of course. But anyway, um, anyway <clears throat> yes. These are his electromagnetic wave. This is his a diagram of his <sighs> equipment. Absolutely. This, yeah, this is the equipment he used. So he had a little battery there with a switch, and uh, you've got um, you've got transformer. A, you've got a transformer there going into being attached to two capacitors, yes. and there's a spark gap between there. Okay, yeah. and he also had let me just oh. uh, let me just do this but otherwise we don't want any interruptions now do we no absolutely and he j basically switched it on powered up waited for the capacitors to like charge build, up. charge up and then it would send a spark across this uh, section here uh, uh, labeled s and then he'd hold his little receiver next door mm. okay which was a cop a uh, uh, a coil, a, coil a, ring, of, a ringed coil of brass. Of brass, absolutely, of course. With a small little gap, with a spark gap, and he noticed that there was a spark on his receiver. Hmm. So he's but going, we don't wow. Say, yeah, no, but we don't see, we don't, I don't think it actually says how far away his ring was held no, it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't say so anyway the in 1864 scottish mass yeah blah 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 maxwell's theory is just rubbish rubbish so. during hertz's studies in 1879 helmholtz suggested that hertz's doctoral dissertation beyond testing maxwell's theory helmholtz had also proposed the berlin prize problem that year at the prussian academy of sciences for anyone who could experimentally prove an electromagnetic effect in the polarisation and depolarisation of insulators, something predicted by Maxwell's theory. Helmholtz was sure Hertz was the most likely candidate to win it. Not seeing any way to build an apparatus to experimentally test this, Hertz thought it was too difficult and worked on electromagnetic induction instead. So obviously he changed direction. Mm, yeah. So he didn't to, set, yeah. do what the guy suggested. But anyway... Hertz did produce an, an analysis of Maxwell's equations during this time at Kiel, showing that they have more validity than 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 the then prevalent action at a distance theories. Anyway, blah 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 blah. So um, between eighteen eighty six and was it there or would it be here? Oh, sorry, yeah. Let's go back to here. Sorry, uh, there he used a Rumkoff coil well, we've heard one of those driven spark gap and one meter wire pair as a radiator capacitor spheres were present at the ends for circuit resonance adjustments his receiver was a simple half wave dipole antenna okay something like that well we got to show an image with a micrometer spark gap okay between the elements this experiment produced and received what are now called radio waves in the very high frequency range. Oh, there we go. And there's his receiver there. There's his receiver there. So basically, it's like a heating element mm. that's coiled round into a ring. Basically. Yeah, basically, with a small gap at the bottom. With a small gap. So maybe he's waving it like this. We don't know how far away from the spark mm. it was he, he was holding been, it. he could have been up quite close he could have been up quite close we've not seen uh well we've not researched to see whether there's a, a well we haven't seen anyone demonstrate re a this. replication of this yeah. at all but um yeah so so but that's one what thing, he's one thing with this and that is we know that one cough coils were, were used by uh, Rayleigh and ramsey when they were playing around with burning the air to produce the noble gases or some of the noble gases some of them yeah 
but Romkov coils produce a very high voltage. Now, because they... Very high uh, voltage. Very high voltage. Now, this has kind of like... This also has um, a little bit... Gives us a little bit of insight into Tesla and his coils that he used to produce high voltage electricity. Yeah. As well, because it's all down to... So the idea of high voltage was already... Well established. Well established within mm. the scientific community. Yeah. It was nothing new. Mm. So, <clears throat> so they're using the Rumkoff coil. They produce an awful lot of voltage. The capacitors are there to store that voltage. And then all of a sudden they get so full, full up, let's use that phrase, that they a spark is produced between the gap and well, there you go. And that spark sends out. That spark sends out. Mm. Radio waves. Well, according to these people, it sends out radio, radio waves, waves. Which then are picked up by the receiver. Which are then picked up by the receiver. Now, we, we could argue that. Now, because Steve Arm, now he mentioned that the electric spark is uh, produces a magnetic field. field. Mm. Now, it's a, it's a good way of understanding. So, could it be? Could it be? You've got an electric field that's being produced by that Magnetic electric field? Oh, yeah, he, I'm sure he said that a magnetic magnetic field is ele uh, electricity. Is electricity, mm. yeah. But the thing is, is that the uh, there's obviously some transference of energy from the apparatus to the receiver. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And <clears throat> it's but likely, yeah. But they've classed this as radio waves. They've classed so, it as radio waves. Let's have... Whereas a we would tend to think that it's more, it's emitting more of an electric field mm. because you've got an electric spark yeah. arcing between two points. So let's have a look at radar. Uh, let's have a little look at radar. radar. Now, what is radar? Radar is a detection system that uses radio waves to determine the range, angle or velocity of objects. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because those waves tend to bounce back for, off of... Metallic, metallic objects. objects and while we while you've mentioned metallic objects we've got to remember okay we've got to remember that all of this um apparatus that was set up by um hertz, hertz is all manufactured it's made out of fabricated Metal. manufactured substances Sis. metals you know everything. Well, everything no, in the it's, circuit. It's been fabricated into metals. <clears throat> it's been fabricated into metals. They've all been processed. They've all been heated, subjected to heat processes, mm. cooling processes, pressure, pressure, the lot. Mm. You know, you've 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 got you've got all that. Okay, mm. just because that's important. Mm. So, <clears throat> so there's radar. Radar, so radar relies on radio waves. Uh, absolutely. A radar system consists of a transmitter producing electromagnetic waves, waves in the radio or microwave domain. Main. Okay. Radar system consists of transmitter producing electromagnetic magnetic waves. waves. The only reason why they call them electromagnetic is simply because they are produced by electricity and magnetism. magnetism. Yes. <clears throat> so what we're beginning to see because is a, a current flowing through a wire will produce a magnetic field so is there anything that links uh, radar to uh, like it says there it produces waves in the form of radio or microwaves waves, domain. domain so is there anything that is is connects radio waves and microwaves within the apparatus within the apparatus well i think really when we think about it because i think there is one piece of information one 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 yeah i don't know where we um there's one there's one piece of wonderful bit of information. No, there's not one piece of information there's one component there's one component that is that is important in, essential Absolutely essential. Because what we're trying to get, well, the point we're trying to make in this part, and that is radio waves Where did it go? and microwaves are exactly the same stuff. They're exactly the same stuff, stuff. absolutely. Okay, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It could, it could well be it's the power that's applied to them that produces 
uh, that determines whether it's microwaves or radio waves. Possibly. It's yeah. just the power, power input. Yeah. You put more power in, you get a different wave because um, well, come out. One component we've noticed is the magnetron. I've got to find it here. Wait, wait, I'm trying sure to find it. It's well, somewhere. Find, just find on page. Yeah, it's, magnetron. It's, here, it's here. Find on page. Magnetron. Yeah, split anode magnetron. There was another one, wasn't there? Wait there. There we go, magnetron. A yeah. uh, key oh. development was the cavity magnetron Johnny in the UK. during World War Two. This was. Yeah. Uh, here you go. You've got cavity magnetron, magnetron. which and we've this, got up here. And this is all about generous. If you go on Hertz's uh, diagram, so it's creating that kind of spark, but in a vacuum. Absolutely, of course. So that that's seems cavity, to be the difference. That seems, yeah, cavity magnetron is a high-powered vacuum tube that generates microwaves using the interaction of a stream of electrons within with a magnetic it's field. A field while moving past a series of open metal cavities, cavity resonators. Electrons pass by the openings of the, to these cavities and cause microwaves to oscillate within, similar to the way a whistle produces a tone when excited by an airstream blown past its opening. The frequency of the microwaves produced, the resonant frequency is determined by the cavity's physical dimensions. Unlike other vacuum tubes, such as a klystron or a traveling wave tube, the magnetron cannot function as an amplifier in order to increase the intensity of an applied microwave signal. The magnetron serves solely as an oscillator generating a microwave signal from direct current electricity supplied to the vacuum tube. Two, which now, is like from a, a Rumpkoff coil. And I'm sure if you produce x-rays, you also put, uh, you also use a vacuum even with x-ray right. tubes. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm sure with x-rays, they also use a vacuum. So what we're beginning to touch on is that basically... There's that a similarity in, in, the how, way, in the way all of these waves, electromagnetic waves, waves are produced, mm. <clears throat> which leads us to think that, you know, they're all one of the same, same stuff. stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. That reminds me and all we've got to do is find out what makes them so different. Absolutely. But that's <clears throat> too late to be. If you've got any thoughts that you'd like, if you've got any comments that you'd like to mention about these radio waves, microwaves. Microwaves, absolutely. You know, all the other waves. Yeah, but the <clears throat> one of the yeah, one of the key components that one has to think about, the key factors, all of these uh way electromagnetic waves are all produced by man made, man fabricated objects, devices. Mm. Okay, that don't that do not occur naturally. naturally. Mm. None of them occur naturally. Sure. I mean, it's like you can't you can't expect to see you walk down the beach and find, and, that. and find that on the beach and think, oh look, it's a it's a magnetron. Wow! Oh, well, yeah, wow! Well, 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 yeah, well, I'm going to be a magnetron collector now. Mm. I'm going to collect magnetrons. Oh, we've seen that uh, magnetron at Mount Meru. No, I've not. Apparently, it's, not, it's, it's not seen that. No, Just no, never believe it. No, I've not seen that. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, it, it does make you think that, you know, all, all of this stuff about uh, electromagnetic waves is all man-made, man-fabricated. Yeah, and it's all related. It's all related stuff as well. It's all related stuff, stuff absolutely, yeah. of course. So but it makes you wonder whether a radio wave and microwaves are all the same. They're, they're basically the same stuff. Yeah, of course, yeah. But if you look at the uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, for example, yeah, I mean, really, they're all the same stuff. Hmm. Well, there's more to come on that one. Absolutely, of course, yeah, because we, we, we've got to really just take it apart and make it realise that it's just rubbish. Mm. You know, the whole understanding, electromagnetic... I can understand why they use the terms electromagnetic, mm. but there's no proof that what's being sent out are electrical and magnetic in nature. They don't know what they are. They know how to produce them, but they don't know what they are. Oh, uh, yeah, well, the, they can pick them up as well. They can, uh, they can yeah, it stimulates a, a receiver. Mm. It will stimulate the receiver, but what? But what's going on between the transmitter and the receiver? Nobody knows. Yeah, because no one can see it. Nobody can see it. it. Nobody can test it at all. It's, it's not because tangible. they use electricity and magnets within their devices. Man's trapped within his thinking of being electricity and magnetism. magnetism yeah. 
That's the fuel for the future. Absolutely. Man, now, when you think about it, human beings are trapped for all of eternity Absolutely. on electricity and magnetism. magnetism. Yeah. Sorry. Not what a future for yeah. mankind. Yeah, it's a bit, bit, bit poor, really, when you think about it. Oh, yeah, well, in the year 4000, everyone will be looking back <clears> and thinking... We haven't developed at all. Absolutely. This is why this is why it's all stagnating. Absolutely. Science yeah, yeah. is stagnating. Yeah. That's why, in some ways, that you may have a, 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 a world war. You may have a big war to to uh, to destroy everything to then rebuild. To then rebuild. Well, absolutely. Of course. Another cycle of life. But anyway, absolutely. Come on. So, but it is interesting to know that his this um, Hertz's demonstration does not does not prove beyond any doubt whatsoever that there's electromagnetic waves. waves yeah that's the point we we would really like to put, pass over to you guys yeah. because you know you it's going to take an awful lot for me to accept electromagnetic waves remember the electron has never even been proven mm. to exist and what is a wave what is a wave, wave. Uh, remember, seen, they, they think light, light, they don't even know what light is, do no, they? No, but we're familiar with a wave of wave, aircraft. A wave of aircraft, aircraft okay. Across. Or a wave, wave of water, water, water wave. Yeah. But what, what? it's all in the imagination, imagination yeah. because they haven't a clue how these things but, work. Yeah, because by calling it a wave, it's the only they can relate it to the water to demonstrate it. Yeah. I suppose you're right, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you could probably imagine that uh, on Hertz's... But they don't do it in a 3D. Uh -huh. They don't do it in 3D. Yeah, what you could probably imagine between the receiver and the transmitter, the spark gap, is this is this aura around the spark gap. And when the receiver goes near to that But how aura, do you know that there's an aura around I'm, I'm just... I don't. I you don't know. You can't see it. I don't know. And I'm it, just... You I'm might just, find... This is trouble. What's the word? Hypothesizing, yeah, but you might find that you, if you put a probe close to it, it it just will be uh, interact with that probe. Yeah, but it might only be, and yeah. you can put a probe all around it, but it'll interact with all those probes, absolutely, making you think that it's all over it, but it's not. It's I, just interacting with the probes. It's just interacting with the probes. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, you it's know, crazy. what? Why human beings think that they know everything there is to know about nature? And they're out to conquer nature and understand it as best they can. It's man it's madness. Yeah. It's absolute anyway, sheer madness. Because they'll never come, they'll never know. Come on. Anyway, let's anyway. go down. Let's go down into a deep Cornwall Cornish tin mine. Absolutely, of course. Now we we were on we watched the now some time ago I actually did state that tin was a true metal. And I thought to myself, well, you know, at the time I've I, I suppose I had good reason to think tin yeah, was I think, true metal. I think at the time, the only reason why we, we thought that was that you could get tin to chloride and actually produce tin metal from the electro electrolysis. From the electrolysis, yeah. Tin to chloride, which was the salt, which was the salt of breaking down hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, and you sold it. We, we used tin. solder, didn't we? Tin solder. Yeah. But the thing is, is that we didn't get much tin from that. No. And we realised then from, um, but we thought, I yeah, I can't remember because you could produce the metal, it was a true metal, and we had it in in our minds that you could find tin in in its pure form mm. as a metal. Yeah, Down I don't know. In these yeah, minds. Think looking back, I don't know why we thought that. Actually, to be fair, but maybe we got caught up in the moment. But anyway, well, I suppose it would have been nice to have actually found something that it would be an actual element, and actually oh, well, yeah, you could yeah. find something. In metallic form, but we've we've now re revised our situation, yeah. and we've come we've come now to the conclusion no. that essentially tin is not an element, is it? No, no not at no. all. No, tin is not an element. Well, it's tin, you product. can't go down a mine and find tin no. in its you know neat, clean tin tin metal. No. You can't find the, tin metal, no, the, which means. As far as I'm concerned, that you cannot find metal, a, any metal in its um, metallic form, any mm. substance in its in a metallic form in nature, sure. mm. can't find it. So all of the native metals are not native at all. 
Because you can't find them. Because you can't find them. If you think I'm wrong, I'd love to well, see somebody find, go down a tunnel, go into a cave and start digging. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. You've found t- a, a metal, a metal. Yeah, but some people say, well, what about gold? Mm. I can find a gold nugget. Well, let's see you melt that down and let's see you actually um, test it for... Um, um, Purity. Oh, get it assayed. Get at it a, assayed at a, an ass- an assayer's, assayer's office. office. And then get back to us when it's hallmarked. Oh, yeah, when it's hallmarked. When you've managed to get value. hallmark on and values, then then we'll, 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 we'll talk. We'll talk, yeah. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know... Because then it may, does make you actually wonder what real gold is. Oh, yeah, when you think about it, can you... Is it possible for you to actually get some a rock out of the ground, heat it up, and the metal that's contained in that rock will turn into a liquid because you passed its, oh, right. its boiling point. Melting point. It's me- melting point. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, melting point. Oh, it's melting point, point. Yeah. yeah, sorry. And then you collect that that metal. Well, this guy in this video... It, 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 surely you could do that. This guy in this video... Surely. This guy in this video is holding a piece of cassiterite... Absolutely, in of course. In his hand. In his, in his hand. Do we need to play the, the the volume? Well, you can do. So, yeah, let's have a look. This is Giva Tin Mine in Cornwall. Because a long time ago in Cornwall, they used to mine an awful lot of tin. And th- we're talking a lot of tin. Mm. Absolutely. So let's just have a little listen to this. Because this yeah, guy... Yeah, go back a little bit more. No, it doesn't matter. Only a little... Oh, well, let's go little, to where he just reaches in here. There, there we go. Cause he's, oh, he's already got it in his oh, hand. Here yeah. we go. Let's have a little listen, listen to this. <laughs> right, it's opening out again here. You can see there's a grill here to stop me going downwards. And they put some protective thing above. They must have found some ore here. And this is what they were looking for. Massive cassiterite. It's about 60 to 70% tin by weight. And it's really heavy. They would have stoked this ore up and down, but then once they've dug it out of the, the, the surrounding rocks, they've actually got to drag it out of the mines themselves. So there we go, you said 60, 70% tin, something yeah. like that. So think about this, if this guy is saying that that cassiterite contains 60, 70% tin. So let's have a quick look on how tin is produced. Oh, uh, sorry, now I'm with you now there, Peter. Oh. Let's have a look at how tin is produced. Oh, 60, Wait, 70% tin. So in theory, the melting point of tin is, is quite low. It's quite low. It's about, is it 300 uh, or melt, Melting point is uh, 231.93 degrees centigrade. So in theory, we have, if, if that guy is saying he's got tin in that rock, that cassiterite, 60-70% tin. So in theory, you just got to heat it up to 230 degrees centigrade and it should just melt out of the It rock. should just pour out of the rock, you know. Yeah. I mean, And you've got your tin. You don't need to process it other than, other than that. Absolutely. And yet when you think about it, um, we've got we've got tin page here on uh, Wikipedia and uh, I'm just trying to find the bit where we need to... Just oh, production. Just production, history, oh, production area. Production, yeah. Tin is produced by carbothermic reduction of the oxide ore with carbon or coke. And the oxide ore of... um, Cassiterite. Is cassiterite, which is... I've just got to get it, right there. Can you... Yeah, cassiterite, yeah. It it is obtained chiefly from the mineral cassiterite. There you go, which is Um, what the guy was holding in his hand. Which is what the guy was holding in his hand. Cassiterite is a tin oxide mineral, SNO2. And it's only O2 because they heat it up. Mm. Of course, there's no there's no SNO2 in there at all, really. Mm. It's just cassiterite, and it looks very similar to what the guy was holding. In well, his hand. In his hand. Not that you Which can is see not it very that well. you, can, you can't see it very well, but you can see it there. You know, he's got this big lump in his hand. Um and all they do is basically, because he, well, when he gets out of the mine, he goes through the whole process of showing people what what they do um, once the the mine or um, goes to the surface, go, comes arrives at the surface because yeah, it's crushed. <clears throat> well, first of all, they take out uh, b- bits of scrap that have, are in the rock, like gloves, yeah, bits yeah, of yeah. wood, yeah. 
Okay, they take them out. It goes under a passes under a magnet. Yeah, which then takes out, out any metal mm. uh, uh, tools or something oh, that could right. be there. Well, it's ferrous. Anything ferrous, absolutely. And from there, it goes it's crushed. It gets crushed even to a smaller kind of uh, stuff, smaller stuff, and then it goes into this big grinding mill, which is very uh, common in industrial um, grading. Yeah. Or what were they called? Classifying. Classifying, yeah. Classifying. And ball bearings in the drum, basically, that, that Breaking, pulverize yeah. it all into a powder. <clears throat> then the powder's going over to these um, flotation beds, and all the lighter stuff passes on the top, which is what they want. All the heavier stuff gets drained, runs down the ribs section to the bottom, and uh, discarded or used for something else. And then the... Uh, the lighter stuff now gets froth flotated. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Froth flotation, okay, which is a very um, common uh, process with copper, lead, lead, and um, other lots of other. Yeah, and there's this as well. And there's this as well. This is a uh, this is this a. Uh, well, just uh, play that. Bit. I've forgotten what this is actually. Well, it involves heat. Does it? Does it it's is not it something for arsenic, isn't it? it oh, I don't know. Let's have yeah. a little listen. That mixed ore is then brought to here, a big magnetic separator, which separates the high grade stuff out, which is sent this way to the dryers. Oh, it's yeah, just, it's a, ma just magnet. a magnet. It's just a big magnet, it's just to separate any remaining ferrous material Chill. that's, oh, well, yeah. that's iron. Absolutely, of course. And this is the dryer, the dryer, the dryer. Heat. The heat, which is where your oxide is generated because yeah. they use they basically dry the stuff out and um, so what he's got in his in his little plastic pot there is tin oxide tin oxide SNO2 True. yeah because it's been hit, but without the drying process there would be no oxygen there yeah, yeah. so the cassiterite doesn't have any SNO2 to begin with absolutely it doesn't have any yeah that that's been added by human beings, beings that yeah. understanding because the thing is with man is that he wants to make out to everybody that tin the tin that he can is produce an element. is an actual element uh, absolutely of course yeah but, but it's not it's a product it's a product that he makes absolutely it's so easy to understand so once they get that what they do is it goes to the smelters and they basically mix it with coke, coke. or Charcoal, even coal. I would think coal, and basically what they get is the the metal uh, form, bit, yeah, bit very, very similar to copper form, yeah, very similar to how copper was made years, many many years ago, yeah. and he's got a lump of it there. So <clears throat> we can clearly say f from now that tin is a man-made fabricated Based product. product. Mm. It is not an element. Now, I. I feel a bit disappointed, really, because it, I suppose it would have been nice for at least one uh, substance on the periodic table to have been an element. An element, but oh, well, yeah. So far, so far, it's not looking good at all. No. The, no. Only, the only substance... Well, th there's not one substance that I can say is an element. No on the periodic table Stable. that hasn't had some form of um, manipulation manipulation or um, fabrication oh what's that word what's that word um, by man some form of intervention intervention by human beings mm. in other words man cannot and will not ever find any of the substances on the periodic table f in nature sure. won't find them at all no can't find them. They're all products products of man's interaction or man's intervention into nature. Mm. And so, this, then this ties in partly with the title of the video. Absolutely, because by doing all this with like the tin, he's corrupting nature. Absolutely, in in our understanding, yeah, we we think that humans are simply corrupting nature because a lot of this stuff that he's making and manufacturing, he doesn't need to manufacture at all. No. A lot of it's just a waste of time. No, because what th this, really? this all bears on, you know, why man is, why is man doing all this corrupting of nature? Why is he doing it all? 
Absolutely, and a lot yeah. of the time he's doing it to give people something to do. He's giving know, in absolutely. our understanding. I mean, yeah, I mean, what what would people do if they weren't doing the things they do now, yeah, especially yeah. In, the, in the Western developed, stagnating world societies? Yeah. Absolutely, look at what people can do. No, no, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's the plethora, the plethora of Activ- activities that yeah. human beings can do um, in the whole of the week, mm. all because of man's. Um, what's the word? All because of man's activity, through yeah. man's activity. Well, you go into the B- Bolivian rainforest. Absolutely, of course. In South America. Well, they, they haven't got much to do there. They don't have much to do, but they just live. They just live, and but they're happier there. They're, they're happier. They have yeah. a lot better um, blood uh, circulation, don't they? Yeah. Or you know, their arteries. Their arteries are a lot better than what, what the many peoples are in, in the, the West. West. Yeah. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes yeah. you wonder what it's all for. Why is man doing all this stuff mm, mm. that is really, a lot of it, it's just a complete waste of time. Anyway, come on. But anyway, so that's that. So Tin, sorry Tin. No. Yeah, another sorry time. Tin. Another time. Oh, and oh, we got show we've got to show our videos. Yeah, another thing that, uh, just something to show. We didn't actually go, we got a couple of pieces of tin and we, we kind of electrolyzed them. Uh, in a bowl of water from the tap. Uh, so there, there's... Um, we did this just to show something about another reason why we think tin can't be a, a metal. metal. Yeah. Can't be a true metal at all. Or can't be a true element. Mm. Anyway. Uh, so we got, we've got 30, just over 30, about 30 volts there. And you've got see, the cathodes on the left, anodes on the right. right yeah. Okay, we're zooming in. Okay, we let's end. just everyone speed it up. Everyone should know that the... Anode will decompose. And we've, we're seeing bubbles coming off from the cathode. And we do actually test. So there's the bubbles. You can clearly see them there. And there, yeah, you can clearly see them there, the bubbles. There we go. And we put a flame up and we test the gas because we just want to know really whether there's hydrogen going to be uh, released. released from the tin. And, and we can safely confirm. We can safely confirm, um, yeah, that we did get here a pot, and those yeah. bubbles do contain hydrogen. Yeah, it was quite difficult because you weren't getting any large bubbles. Not there; they're very fine, aren't they? Very. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we did hear a pop. We did hear a pop, uh, but we're not going to do it because it'd be hard and to find. And you can see from the anode, you're getting a. There's a white kind of. Uh, oh, there's a white mist. Mist floating mm. around the anode. Okay. Now, we did uh, we did this one very quickly. We actually put uh, a piece of cardboard in between the um, anode cathode, and cathode, cathode yeah. as a membrane, mm. as a form of membrane. And one thing we did notice was that the white stuff was also coming f- out from, from the, the cathode, cathode as well as the hydrogen. So you're getting the decomposition of both electrodes. So absolutely both electrodes are being decomposed. Composed. Now this throws this does throw a bit of a spanner in the works, doesn't it? Hmm. Because you, it, for a lot of people with when they're understanding electrolysis, one should only get um, decomposition at uh, the anode. Decomposition at the anode and you should get you shouldn't get decomposition Just at the cathode. cathode. No, no. Normally things get, add on to it. Normally things are attracted to, to the it, cathode. Yeah. You know, if you're doing molten salt electrolysis, for example, that's how you can get uh, your a hydroxide form or a metal form. Yeah, you could get a metal form, yeah. for example, like sodium. But <clears throat> we can clearly see that in this demonstration that we're getting a uh, we're getting that white cloudiness mm. uh, appear at the cathode, which means what's happening at the anode is happening also at the cathode. cathode, The only difference is that you're getting hydrogen produced at the cathode and not at the anode. However, saying that though, I think it's very slow at the anode. Yeah, it will. You will get a gas at the anode. It's more than possible that at the anode there are bubbles formed on there, but Mm. they are, like you say, it could be very, very, very slow process. Mm. A very slow process. So you know, I mean, it's all food for thought at the end of the day, and it gives us a bit of an it gives us a better understanding on tin because tin, if it was really a, an element, it should have remained as a metal, mm. shouldn't it? 
Yeah. You would agree with that. But we see what we see here is more or less the same as what we see with aluminium. Mm. You you do the same thing with aluminium, you'll get a white, misty kind of um, yeah. cloudiness to the water. And because that's what they and this white stuff is what makes up these metals. And I I could probably offer that if we continued this process for a considerable length of time the water would start going black yeah the water would go black because of the carbon, carbon. content that's in the tin, tin metal hasn't. i mean if we, we we've only got to look be. at the tin you can see it there that it does look black in yeah. certain places that could be the reason why you get tin creep because it's the interaction between the, the salt the salt and the carbon that's if yeah all the it's the, all the cassiterite and the, the carbon yeah yeah, we're only saying salt. We use the term salt, salt loosely, loosely here because it's a salt-like substance in that it's just white. Hmm. Anyway, come on. Yeah, so that's that. That's, that's that, that one, one. Out, out of the way, isn't it? So that's that one. What's so that let's one? just go back. Do we need to go back to King of Randoms video? Oh, yeah, we'd we better add go back to King of Randoms video. Let's have a look Very bushes. quickly. Come on. Very quickly. And King of Randoms video. video. Very quickly. Here we go. Why is it this one this here? This one here. This one here. Now... Um, in in this video, uh, we're saying that basically what's continue, what's happening, you get an expansion and contraction. Yeah, I mean we we watch it here because they they do the matchstick. They, um, they, well, they get rid of the get, they get rid of the variable of the candle out of the equation, and they actually use a matchstick. matchstick. Yeah. Okay, and they're going to use a laser light. So let's have a little quick whippy through on this. There we go. Now watch the bubbles. Coming out the bottom. Coming out the there bottom. You, you can see an immense, a lot, well, you can see quite a lot of bubbles. Bubbles coming out of the bottom of the jar. Mm. So basically the match ignites, instant heat, the air inside the expands. jar heats up, expands, and bubbles out and oozes out of the bottom of the jar. Which means there's less air in the jar. Which means there's less air in the jar. Absolutely, of course. So there we go. There we go. You can see the bubbles there. There you go. It makes ripples on the water, and then as soon as the as soon as the um, as soon as the air is spent mm. because it's you know supporting the combustion, and the flame goes out, you get instant contraction. Well, you get a temperature difference, temperature change, temperature change, contraction, and the air and the water rushes in to fill the air that left the jar to begin with. There's nothing there about oxygen. oxygen. I look at this demonstration and I don't see oxygen anywhere. I don't. You know, no. if if anyone thinks that there is oxygen and it's due to oxygen, we'd like to see some other demonstration that proves that mm. rather than this because this does not prove it. Because you're only observing something. That's all. You're only making an observation. observation. And we would like to say thank you to the subscriber who gave us the link, the to, link to the video. video. I've forgotten who it was now. I, I can't remember. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, great one. Anyway. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Absolutely, anyway, of course. On. So that's that one out of the way. You know, you know, all these people trying to justify their understanding yeah, of, no, yeah. you know, well, to things to justify coming out with rubbish. Absolutely, just if you know, to justify coming, coming out, out with rubbish. rubbish. Anyway, so come what on. are we on now then? We're on our bread. We're on our bread. Oh, absolutely, of course, yeah. Now, um, yeah, and you thought humans do not corrupt nature. nature. Well, f so far throughout this whole video, we've we've come across um, um, instances where humans basically do corrupt not nature. nature. Mm. They bastardise it essentially. Yeah, basically. You know, yeah. with all of their devices that they make and the products equipment, they make, the equipment, the technology, technology that they use, and everything. They bastardise nature. nature. They mm. kind of like twist nature and warp it and try and get, you know, as much out of it that they can. Mm. They distort nature. Yeah, absolutely. They um, mutate nature mm. when you think about it. Yeah. So when you think about it, if you accept that well, it's understanding... Like if you're a dog breeder, isn't it? It's like if you're a dog, a dog breeder, breeder and you're, you're making hybrids. Yeah. And you're breeding that dog with that dog and that dog with that dog and that dog with that person. Oh, no, I didn't mean that really. But oh, look, oh, Chihuahua Dalmatian. Absolutely, of course. You know, this is what man does. He, mm. he basically, with nature, well, yeah. mm. absolutely, that's all he does. Yeah. And he, he, he builds up his whole understanding on his activities, not on 
what nature really is because he, he will never know. But he never looks at himself. Never looks at never himself. Looks to himself. ever think that he's yeah. got a problem or yeah. he is the, the problem. problem. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. But um, one of the, so one of the things we've come across is food. Food, yeah. Well, well we, we've got into the process of making our own bread. Absolutely, of course. Because we look at bread that you can get from the supermarket. Go we get, we get our supermarket. Oh, up. supermarket page. Here, here we go. Yeah, supermarket. Here, here we, we go. go. Bread. Here go we go. Tesco. Tesco. Because they all love us at Tesco. Bread. Tesco. Here we go. Now we look at bread from Tesco. Now let's have a look at the ingredients. Just pick any bread. Oh dear. Bread and wholemeal bread. bread. Tesco here groceries. There Tesco we go. Bread. Here we go. Here we go. Look here at that. Can't beat it. Oh, you want sliced bread? Do you want sliced? Yeah, there you We've go. got farmhouse, not the whole mill. Whole mill, whole no, mill. Just click on one. There you go. Oh, just here we go. On. Hovis whole mill. Yeah. There we go. 800 grams. There we go. Whole mill, medium. There we go. Let's have a look at the ingredients. Uh, got to have a look. Ingredients. ingredients. Oh, here we go. Uh, ingredients. Whole mill flour. Bigger. There we there go. Right. Um, whole milk flour, water, caramelised sugar, yeast, wheat protein, wheat flour, with added calcium, iron, niacin, thiamine. There we go. Mm. Salt, soya flour, vegetable oil, rape seeds. Yeah, and you've got go. all this. Let's go back. Oh, there you go. Can find uh, another one. Let's go and so find another. Calcium in it. Let's go. Let's go on this one. Do do do. Go on, have Another whole milk. There oh, we go. Up. Ingredients. Ingredients. Wheat flour, rye flakes, wheat gluten, yeast, oat bran, salt emulsifiers, spirit vinegar, fermented wheat flour. Yep, there you go. There's nothing there, is oh, there? Oh, yeah. Nothing There's there nothing about. there. Mm. Oh, right, yeah, that's interesting. Maybe it's in with the... Uh, Maybe it's in with the um, didgeridoo, the wholemeal wheat flour. Get some white bread up. Get Let's some white get... Bread. Oh, well, that's another... Why is it they're all uh, wholemeal? I don't know. It's probably because you've selected... Oh, I've just put in bread. I've just put bread. And now I'm up to uh, didgeridoo. There we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, look, calcium. preservative. You've got calcium propionate. You've oh, got yeah. there. And um, whole grain. Can I just go up to the top? <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Wait there. Let's go back up. I've just typed oh. in bread, you see. Should we go... Yeah, they do more bread than that. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the brown and brown wholemeal and bread. wholemeal bread. That's why. Well, right? let's have a look at uh, on brown and wholemeal bread. Bread rolls, bakery, bread and bread rolls. and rolls. Here we go. There we go. Warburtons. There you go. White bread. Just get white bread. Farmhouse white bread. Here, yeah, Warburtons. Yeah, they were good on dead and days yeah. down to the bakery. Down at mill. Uh, now wheat flour. Wheat flour has got with calcium, iron, niacin. Wheat flour with calcium, B3 iron, niacin, B, B, B3 and thiamine. There you go. So that's in there. What but else the, cal have we got? the calcium, to cut a long story short, the calcium is. Tesco actually, White Farmhouse. There the calcium go. is actually calcium carbonate. There yeah, wheat flour, uh, calcium carbonate, iron, niacin, thiamine. Okay. So why, what our understanding is, why do they put cow's chalk? A calcium yeah, carbonate. Why chalk. Put chalk in bread. Multi seed, multi seed. Here we go. We've got the multi seed. And they also put iron metal. There you go. Calcium carbonate, iron, niacin, thiamine. And they also put iron metal. Iron metal. In bread, bread as well. Absolutely. Or of course. flour. Flour. No, in the flour. You've got to remember that whenever you see a substance like in the ingredients, like iron, they will always use. Iron chemically metal. made iron metal mm. to grind that right down into a powder put it in the food. and then bung it in the food, food. this yeah. is what they'll do yeah. they won't use kind of like they won't use iron iron ore from the ground they won't do no, that they'll use no. iron metal but the thing is is that iron metal contains carbon yeah no, yeah so well, when you think about they don't say but the thing is is that think of all the stuff that you're eating okay that's added to the flour mm. Warburton's medium sliced white bread. There you go. Okay, there's Warburton's. There you go. Um, uh, wheat flour with calcium, iron, niacin, and thiamine. And you'll find that calcium, iron, niacin, and thiamine are all contained in the wheat flour. Okay. Yep. Because if you go up uh, the the legislation. In lots and lots and lots and lots of get, bread. If you get the legislation. Let's get up the le legislation. Here we go. We've got bread. 
and the Bread and Flour legislation. Fed, Federation of Bakers, Bakers. Limited. Yeah. Uh, bread weights, UK bread and flour regulations. Bakers. The bread and flour regulations require that flour should contain not less than 0.24 milligrams of thiamine, whatever that is, 1.60 milligrams of nicotinic acid, and 1.65 milligrams of iron per 100 grams of flour. Mm. Yeah, the amounts are found naturally in wholemeal flour. I'd really like to know oh, yeah, how yeah, that's yeah, possible. Yeah. It's because they put it in where's the fertiliser. They put it in the fertilizers, fertilizer, don't yeah, they? The Absolutely. Ground. Which then goes on the crop to grow yeah. the wheat. Yeah. You know, white and brown flowers must be fo- must be fortified to restore their nutritional value to the required level. Mm. In addition, in addition, it gets worse. Calcium carbonate, which is chalk, chalk. okay, yeah. from your white cliffs of Dover, Dover. Yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, a level of not less than two hundred and thirty-five milligrams and not more than three hundred and ninety milligrams per one hundred grams of flour, is added to all flours except wholemeal and certain self-raising varieties. Mm. This ensures the nutritional value of all bread whether it is white, brown, or whole mill, okay? To find out more about these UK regulations, please download a copy, which we've done here. Yeah, statutory and instrument. Now, this yeah. is the statutory instrument, 1998, okay, the Bread and Flour Regulations. It's got the Crown copyright, mm, okay, yeah. which means the Crown owns the law. Mm, basically, it's not yeah. Parliament. It's not MPs. The Crown owns the law. Yeah, but the, the, the MPs are in the Palace of Westminster. Yeah, but they're in the Palace of Westminster. Palace. It's, it's a Palace of Westminster. It's owned by the Crown. Absolutely, of course. And when when you do look through this, you you basically find out and discover that all bread, okay, or a lot of bread that doesn't include buns, bun loaves, chapatis, chollas, pita bread, potato bread, or bread specially prepared for coelaic sufferers, okay, has all got additives in mm. iron iron calcium calcium and w- we kind of like think to ourselves why on earth do they put iron in bread why well, do they put calcium carbonate carbon. chalk in, in bread? bread yeah i know yeah these and we we kind of think because mainstream has this mentality that we breathe in oxygen in the air absolutely of course so it's no wonder that mainstream has this it's a funny idea that our bones are all made of calcium. Calcium. Calcium is good for teeth and calcium's bones. Calcium is good for teeth, for teeth and bones. This is rubbish in our view because where's the proof of that? Where's the proof that eating bread that's laden with calcium can make your bones, bones stronger? Stronger. Yeah. Where is the evidence? Where's the ev- or, where's the proof? Well, where's the proof that if you eat chalk? Your bones will absorb that chalk, chalk yeah. and it won't get clogged up in your arteries yeah. and or in, your in, digestive in other system. parts of your body, body yeah. as it were. Yeah. Because chalk, as far as I'm concerned, calcium is a substance that doesn't really degrade. Mm. Once it's in your body, and once it's, it's in your body, out. I mean, how, how are you going to get it out? Yeah, yeah I mean, this is the right. thing. And then we think about, well, what about the health implications for all of this, essentially, in our view, poisoning? Because mm. it is really, I mean, you well, know, what's wrong with, you may as well eat rust. Yeah. Would you oh, eat right. rust? Oh, right. I wouldn't go want to out, eat go rust. Out your front gate. You can get your front gate, get your angle grinder <laughs> or your file and just yeah. file away at your garden gate yeah, and yeah. you can eat that. But, yeah. You sprinkle have, that a bit this is you. what this is what these these people are telling you to do. You could sprinkle a bit. You could have some yeah. salt and pepper. You can have rust on toast. Oh my! Yeah. No, you could have the salt and pepper pots, but instead of the, the pepper, you could put some rust in there. Absol- a of some absolutely, yeah. Iron oxide. Oh, you can have it. It could be a little condiment, couldn't it? Yeah, no range of condiments. <clears throat> rust. You can have oh, rust. There's some mercury there. Absolutely, you can have mercury. <laughs> Have what you want, do you know what I mean? I mean, this is what these people are telling you. Yeah. These people are telling you that all of this stuff, all of these inorganic materials like yeah. calcium, iron, are good for you. Absolutely. And yet you're an organic being. Being. Yeah. Okay, yeah, get the, yeah, you, you got it, haven't you? You got the drift. Because yeah. this, this is what we think, and that is an organic being shouldn't be absorbing into their body 
inorganic Organic materials. Shouldn't be doing it mm. because those inorganic materials are just going to collect in your body, and over a period of time, they're going to clog things up. Absolutely, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So you know, but this is another reason or another illustration example of where man is basically bastardizing nature mm. and building up his understanding of his world. Mm. Not of nature, not of the no, natural no, no, world that we yeah. live in, but just of his world. And then he's palming off to everyone like you guys, so you lot fall for it. Absolutely. So you end up doing all of yeah. these silly but things. Don't worry. But don't worry, because this applies to practically all bread that's sold in the UK. So you can be rest assured that even your next door neighbour is having his dose of iron. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or, or the person who's got the, the BMW. Yeah, the BMW or the yeah. or the mansion somewhere. Yeah, even they're eating uh, all these poisons as well. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. So uh, absolutely, I think yeah. I think a lot of it. The reason why you and I are making our own bread is simply because we, we just we just you, you get by a piss of bread, and it's, it's you read on the ingredients. It's got calcium carbonate. You think why? Why do they put why? why? It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely, of course. But no one else says it's good for your strong teeth and bones, but there's no proof of there's that. There's no proof of that. Absolutely, of course. None whatsoever. Yeah. Iron, iron's good for um, iron's good, good for, for the blood. Good for the blood, blood. and yet where's the proof of that? Where's the proof? If you, if you do a test for blood for the for the presence of iron, and it shows positive, yeah. Think about where the iron's come from. Yeah, yeah? it's come from the food you eat. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the iron, because the iron probably just stains yeah. you. And this, this, this. Because iron is a good pigment. Yeah. They used to use iron and, as a pigment. Iron ore. Yeah. Well, look at the Bridgewater Canal. Bridgewater Canal, absolutely. But, but this has a whole, a whole bearing on our on on our understanding that if you look at all the ingredients and you see chemicals in there. They're there because man's put them there. Absolutely, of course. And it's like the term carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. The, the, there is There are no carbohydrates in the ground at all. There's no the such thing as the ground oh, carbohydrates. The carbohydrates is be, uh, occur because the, the man corrupts the food and puts them through processes that are carbohydrated. Hydrated. The the process is a carbohydration, really. Yeah, basically. It's and then a that's what, yeah. so a carbohydrate is a, a substance that's been through processes that are carbon related and water related. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you, the, the whole understanding, you know, of man's man's corrupt world out there is, you know, it's it's there yeah. in your face. It's yeah, there. no, yeah, but it's far from. Reality. It's far from reality, and it's far from absolutely. It's far from yeah. sensible in a lot of cases. So there we go. But anyway, that's it. Go. Yeah, that wraps us all up wraps for us up. another session there, Peter. Been a so pleasure. there we go. As absolutely, always. of course. Yeah. So uh, there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want us to have a little look at anything, please let us know. Leave us a link below, yeah, or a comment or whatever. And if you, let us know your ideas on um, whether you think it's right for people to actually take to eat rust would you have your family eat rust would you make a rust cake oh, well, for yeah. example yeah, rust or chalk cake mm. we, maybe we should make chalk cakes and oh, actually well, sell them idea, yeah. maybe at a summer fair for example oh well yeah they're going or something uh, the, the, your vicar's, uh, vicar's or, uh, afternoon tea or we could go to the seaside and sell rust cakes oh yeah I don't know. absolutely of course yes. yeah or if you've got um, if you've got an idea that thinks whether the radio waves and x-rays and X-rays, and um, absolutely, I'm sure I could be right that it's all down to the waves. power that's supplied to to there's, them. There's something that connects yeah. radio waves, X-rays, like gamma rays, gamma rays, and what was the other we were looking at? UV radio, microwaves, microwaves. microwaves. There's something that connects there's, all these. And there, there's something they've got it all in common. Absolutely, I'm sure. And whether we whether we <laughs> reveal that, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it's, it's, we could be wrong. Absolutely, but it's it's funny how. To create radio waves or microwaves, you always need the magnetron. Ma- the magnetron. The magnetron. The key component. Key component. Absolutely, of course. So I wonder if there's a magnetron, if man wants to produce some gamma rays. Well, I know there's a, there's an there's a, or X rays. There's there's a vacuum for for to produce X rays. Wow! Wow! Would you, would you believe it? Absolutely, yeah, of course. We'll it's so easy to you know. It's so easy to just uh, what's the word? 
just to debunk, isn't it? Absolutely. Anyway, Absolutely. Of course. Anyway, so thanks ever so much. And yeah, let us know. Drop us a comment if you want. And there you, there you have it. So always remember till next time. If something doesn't make sense, like oxygen being in the air. Oh, yeah. 21%. Oxygen called, absolutely. Oxygen supporting combustion. Only oxygen. Only oxygen can support combustion. Yeah. Thinking just that. Yeah. When there's air that does support combustion. Oh, well, yeah. And the oxygen is a processed gas. And oxygen, you've got to, you, you got to process the air in order to make, make it. oxygen. Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely, of course. Mm. Or, or if you think well, that... Well, there's nitrogen in the air. Absolutely. Or, or if, we breathe yeah. out oxygen. And or, absolutely. No, or if you think that all CO2. of your food in your supermarket is all healthy for you. Oh, right. Well, yeah, absolutely, of, of course. Of it, yeah. even, even if you think that the farmer doesn't waste his time by putting lots of fertilisers on his fields. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's because the society cares about its people and Absol it doesn't put money first oh of it cares. course it puts people first oh of course yeah and if the you welfare think that. of the people absolutely of course yeah or if you or if you think lots of stuff or that everyone's f f philanthropic f philanthropic yeah philanthropic yes. philanthropic everybody is absolutely of course everybody can even even god even absolutely god is of course and if you even think that uh, people don't buy uh, bigger cars than their car parking spaces as well yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all nonsense isn't it absolutely so thanks ever so much and we'll see, see you next, next time. time okay bye Ta -da. the earth isn't round it's flat how do you know i've observed it in all my travels over europe it's flat everywhere it's flat